All right, uh, time for a few examples that accompany this lesson, some questions that we could ask. Uh, if we were in the same classroom together, I would work through these at the board with your help, uh, but we don't have a classroom together, so this is the next best thing. So let's consider between this on the sphere. You can hit the pause button, read the, the question. I uh, want to take some time to remember Here's a sphere. In the case that P and R are non-antipodal points, uh, so they're not opposite ends of a diameter of the sphere. So there's some point P and some point R looking for points that are between them. Well, if you consider that there is a great circle through P and R, a circle that's centered at the center of the sphere and passes through P and R, this point, uh, sorry, this segment, this part of that great circle, all of those points, all of the points on the blue segment are between P and R. Why? If you pick some point Q on that blue segment, then the distance from P to Q plus the distance from Q to R is the distance from P to R. In the case where P and R are antipodal points, that's much more difficult. So think about P as being at the tippy top and R being at the bitty bottom. It becomes difficult for us to talk about betweenness because Every point, distance from P to Q, distance from P to R, is distance from P to R. So in the case where P and R are antipodal points, this is not well defined because every great circle that passes through P, there's lots of great circles that pass through P and R. So the segment, that's not well defined, so we can't even talk about it. Uh, let's verify that this function that I talked about in one of those other videos is in fact a coordinate function. Uh, so let's just remind ourselves what we mean by this. Uh, so you have the taxicab metric. So the taxicab metric says when we have two points, we find the distance between them by subtracting the, by finding the horizontal distance and the vertical distance between the two points and adding those together. So we'll let f of x and y be x times 1 plus the absolute value of the slope. Uh, and that, by the way, is in the case where the line has the slope to begin with, right? So this is the line y, oh, oh, y equals mx plus b. And so you have uh, x1 with a y value of mx1 plus b, and you have some other point x2, mx2 plus b. And we want to show that the function, that this function is 1 to 1 on 2, and that the distance between p and Q is the difference between their coordinates. So uh, showing that the function is 1 to 1 isn't terribly difficult. Uh, let's show that the function is 1 to 1. Uh, we assume that f of p is f of Q and we'll show that P is Q. So if we assume that F of P is F of Q, well then F of P, that's X1 times 1 plus the absolute value of the slope, is equal to F of Q, and that's X2 times 1 plus the absolute value of the slope. And you can probably figure out what happens next. We want to show that x1 is x2 because we want to show that p is q. Well, 1 plus the absolute value of the slope, that's a positive number. That's a positive number, so we can divide on both sides by that number. So x1 equals x2 as needed. 
Uh, then we want to show that the function is on to. Uh, remember what we mean when we say that a function is on to. We let z be in the codomain. The codomain is a set of real numbers. And then we find an element of the domain that maps to it. And so we let x be equal to z over 1 plus the absolute value of m with y equal mx plus b. And then it's not very hard to check that f of xy is in fact z. And the point P with coordinates x, y is, in fact, on the line. So that checks. And then the third thing for us to check here is that the taxi cab distance between P and Q is supposed to be the absolute value of f of p minus f of q, uh, that's not terribly difficult to figure out. Um, the taxicab distance between p and q, the taxicab distance between p and q is the difference of the x's plus the difference of the y's. And Each y is mx plus b, so this is like that. The plus b's cancel. And so it's not terribly difficult at all to bring that up like this, pull the m out, and, and we're done. So we verify that that is a coordinate function. It is a one-to-one -one function. It is an on-to function, and the distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. Um, we use this, this idea of a coordinate function, to prove the existence and uniqueness of the midpoint of a line segment. This is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, it should make sense that a line segment has a midpoint. Oh, golly gee. That's the theorem. I'm trying to do the proof. So we're going to let segment AB be given. And we're going to let F, which has a domain set of all the points on line AB and range set of real numbers, be a coordinate function. What do we have to show? We have to show that there exists a point on segment AB that divides that segment in half, and we have to show that there is only one such point. So we let x be f of a plus f of b over 2. We let x be the average of the coordinates for a and b. This almost makes sense. So f of a is a real number. f of b is a real number. 2 is a real number. So f of a plus f of b over 2 is a real number. And f is a coordinate function, so it's a bijection. So there is some point, because, oh golly, because f is on 2. There exists a point M such that F of M is X. Now, M is on segment AB because F of A Oh, let's see. 
why is that true? Um, f of a, then f of a plus f of b over 2, then f of b, uh, or, or the same with the signs reversed. Uh, if f of a is bigger than f of b, then it goes this way, and if f of a is less than f of b, then it goes the way you see it. So what's a m? What's the distance between a and m? Well, it's f of m minus f of a, and that, with a little bit of fraction work, is like that. Also, how far is it from m to b? Well, that's f of b minus f of m, and that's the same thing. Therefore, am equals mb, and m is a midpoint of segment ab. So the question is, is there more than one? Uh, no. Why? Because F is a bijection. So when we find this point M that has this particular coordinate, this particular coordinate must be the coordinate of the midpoint, and there is only one point that can have that coordinate, and so M is unique. Done. Uh, so again, using bijections from Math 239, Introduction to Proof, uh, using properties of real numbers that we all understand, we can make some things happen really, really quickly. OK. Uh, one more thing. Uh, let's prove that if A and B are two distinct points, then segment AB equals segment BA. Uh, this will not be terribly difficult. Uh, the only reason that I show this proof in class is because I want us to remember how we prove the two sets are equal. We prove the two sets are equal by showing that one is a subset of the other and the other is a subset of the one. That's how we show the two sets are equal. That's our plan here. Uh, let's deal with this way first. So we're going to let P be a point on segment AB. Well, what are all the points on AB? Either P is A, or P is B, or P is between A and B. Well, let's run down them. Let's run down each case. If P is A, is P on this segment? Yes. If P is B, is P on this segment? Yes. If P is between A and B, is P on this segment? Yes. In each case, P is an element of BA. The other containment follows similarly. So this is me reminding us how to prove the two sets are equal. Okay, uh, everything else is up to you. Best wishes.